What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about 10 stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade in the month of April of 2019. We're also going to be talking about a couple of stocks and ETFs that you actually called out to me in the call out section on Discord as well as on Instagram. So typically I'm talking about some stocks and ETFs that you guys shout out. So if you want me to talk about an ETF or stock in the next video, feel free to shoot me an Instagram DM or go in our Discord chat. The link is down below, 100% free, and you can start calling them out in the call out section. So without further ado, guys, I don't want to waste too much time today. Let's start out with today's video by briefly going over where the markets are headed. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth analysis of the overall markets, just go check out Friday's video. I went in depth on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. But the gist of that video is we finally picked a direction in the S&P 500 here. So for those of you all that were watching the markets or watching my videos last week, we were pretty much fiddling around the support on the 180 or rather the 50 simple moving average on the 180. 80 day four hour chart. We were pretty much hovering on this support for a couple of trading days without picking a distinct direction to the upside or the downside. And we can finally see, or we finally saw rather, that direction picked on Friday when we had that pretty solid green day of almost 20 points up 0.7% in the S&P 500. And we were talking about how the direction was going to be picked um, based on where we were going you know, either above the resistance on this wedge or below the support of this wedge. So if we were to break the support of this wedge, you know, that was going to be a downside bearish direction in the S&P 500, especially if we were to break the 2790 support here. And if we were to break the top, the resistance of this wedge, that was going to be an upside bullish move in the S&P. And we can clearly see we gapped up on Friday and we continued to push up close Closing the day up 19 points. So this week, we're probably going to see, based on the technicals here, strictly based on the data and the technicals here, more green with the next resistance at 2860. And if we break that resistance, that's going to be a higher high in the S&P 500. And we're going to be testing potentially all-time highs from there, which are really only about 106 points away from where we are now. So now that we got the gist of where the markets are headed, let's just hop right into it and talk about 10 stocks and ETFs that I have here on my phone listed from ones that you guys called out and some that I'm personally watching myself. Starting off here with Starbucks, ticker symbol SBUX. And Starbucks is one of those stocks, guys, that's been on an absolute tear here. If we're just going back on the one year, one day chart, Starbucks was literally back in July of 2018, a $47 stock. And from there, we've nearly, not really nearly, we're close to about like 70, 60, 70% up, but we're up a crap ton all the way up to about $74.48. So the reason why I'm watching Starbucks here is due to the uptrend pattern that it's on. So I want to potentially see before I do build a position in Starbucks, I want to see a pullback and a test on the $72 old resistance, which now we broke out of it, making it a new support. Because we can clearly see here, you know, based on the relative strength index, that we are overbought on Starbucks. And I actually made a video on the RSI more in depth. So for those of you guys that want to learn more about that, go check out that video. It's a couple of videos ago. But we do see it is overbought now with really the all-time high being hit and the candlestick showing that we are overextended. So a nice entry point in my eyes here would be a pullback a retest at $72. And for us to see, are we going to start to curl back up here to continue the uptrend pattern? Or if we break this level, we're going to potentially be pushing down more from there, looking to test either the 50 simple moving average or the 180 simple moving average with 
which both have been uh, support levels in the past. So in terms of Starbucks here, it's looking good, but we are a bit overbought. I want to see a bit of a pullback and a retest at about $72 for a potential entry there in Starbucks. So the second one I'm personally watching here, guys, is Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. And for those of you guys that don't know, I feel like I think it was after the Fed meeting, or was it before the Fed meeting? Anyway, around the time of the Fed meeting, a lot of the banking stocks got crushed, right? Bank of America here, we can go to, you know, JP Morgan got crushed. Let's see, Wells Fargo probably got crushed as well. Yup, Wells Fargo dropped. A bunch of these banking stocks ended up really pulling back heavily and when the stock pulls back we all know this by now especially for us looking for swing trades that is a good margin of profit being opened and a good opportunity to hop in as a swing trade if confirmations of uptrend uh you know are being confirmed right so we got that pullback which is a good sign for us swing traders to keep an eye on a stock which in this case from $30 to $27 opened up a nice 11% margin we got the consolidation and now we're slowly starting to pop back up so this is a good sign that BAC is looking to recover and it wants to test the resistance at the 50 SMA but the one thing here that worries me a bit and this is honestly mostly due to the big drop is this bearish cross that we're seeing on Bank of America which is why I want us to break out of this 50 simple moving average resistance before even considering taking a position. And for those of you guys that don't know, a bearish cross on any time frame that we're doing our analysis on is when the 50 simple moving average, which in this case is this green line, crosses below the 180 simple moving average. And if you're not using, you know, the 50 moving average and the 180 moving average, it's pretty much the same thing when a smaller time moving average crosses below the bigger time time moving average, right? So if you're using, let's say, a 200 moving average, and let's say, for example, a 70 moving average, if the 70 were to cross below the 200, it's the same exact thing, right? So whenever a smaller moving average crosses below the bigger one, that is a bearish move. But the fact that we are forming this J pattern here, where we found the bottom, we're pushing up now, this gives me you know, incentive at this point to just keep an eye on Bank of America, right? So I would ideally like to see a break out of the $28 um, old support, which is now a resistance, and take a look at this, guys. And that would also put us right by that 50 simple moving average resistance as well. That would be a potential entry point if we were to break these levels, maintain them as a new support, and then pop up again. So Bank of America looking pretty solid here heading into this week. The next one I want to talk about is Apple, and Apple is one that we've been covering a lot on this channel. So for those of you guys that have been paying attention to Apple, Apple, the news recently, we got a lot of announcements in terms of Apple. We got the credit card, which you kind of knew from a couple of weeks and months ago that this was coming. We got the new gaming service, right? The news service that Apple is coming out with. And what's the fourth one now that I'm thinking about it off the top of my head? I forget. But we got some news from Apple last week, which the investors, the market didn't really react too heavily to it, right? I believe the news came out and the stock was down about 2% that day. But nonetheless, guys, we pulled back from 195, this resistance here, and we tested the 185 support. And it seems like we ended up holding above that level as well as the 50 simple moving average as a support. So as of now, it seems like Apple is maintaining and continuing its uptrend pattern here. And this is pretty attractive in my eyes for a swing trade entry. So around $190, 191 one, I think is a good entry and all of these indicators that we use pretty much right now except for the MACD are showing that 
Apple is a pretty decent buy right now. Actually, the MACD is showing a pretty decent buy as well because we're starting to see the red thing, uh, you know, the red uh, sticks here are starting to fade away. They're going to pop up green, and we all know whenever this is showing green, that is, in terms of the MACD, a decent time to buy. The RSI is pulling back a bit, and it's in the mid-range right now between the 30 and the 70 level. That's a pretty good spot for the, uh, you know, RSI. We're maintaining the 50 SMA support. Support, like I said, so from 190, if we were to enter up to 195, let's see how much we can get here. That's about 2.7%. And the thing here is if we were to break that resistance and continue the uptrend and then go to the next uh, resistance at $200, that would be around a 5 to 6% margin in Apple, which again is super attractive in my eyes. I'm maintaining this one at the top of my watch list, ticker symbol AAP. L. So the next two we're going to talk about are inverse ETFs, one being DGAS, ticker symbol DGAZ. And for those of you guys that don't know, this is a natural gas-based ETF. It trades based upon natural gas, right? Whenever natural gas is selling off, DGAS is going up in price because it's the bear ETF. And we know we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks now, how natural gas was trading in between this horizontal channel. And we finally broke the support of the channel at about 275, which was a bearish move. And from there, we can see the bearish cross, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. We're seeing the 50 SMA acting as a resistance, and we've tested it a couple of times, got rejected a couple of times, which is a very good sign here for DGAS, right? But now, I'm not really going to jump the gun on natural or degas rather until natural gas does see a little pump back up maybe to 270 to retest that same resistance at the 50 simple moving average because again if we look back we've been getting rejected there over the past couple of trading days so ideally an entry point in degas that i would like to see would be if we popped up on natural gas, opening up more margin on DGAS, and we got the confirmation that we were being rejected at this point, and we were going to push for the next lower low. At this point, let's say if we popped up the 270, slowly start to get rejected here, I think that would be a good um, entry point in DGAS. And by the time you guys are watching this video, you'll be able to see exactly where these natural gas futures are, because this market Market, the futures market does open up 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So keep an eye, you know, when uh, when you're watching this, maybe pause it, go check out your charts. Where are we, right? right? Are we going to be popping up here? Are we going to be retesting this level? That is something you need to keep an eye on. So the next one we're going to talk about here is UWT. So UWT is a crude oil ETF. It goes up whenever crude oil is going up in price. It's a bull ETF, right? And crude oil is another one of those futures that you can keep an eye on at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And crude oil right now is at a point where it's either going to get rejected by this resistance at 60, 70, or rather, rather 60, 50, or it's going to break out of this resistance and run up to the next resistance, which is at about $61.20. So this is something that I'm going to be keeping an eye on, right? Are we going to end up popping above this resistance, which we briefly did on Friday, but then we ended up pushing back down, now making it a resistance again. And are we going to maintain this level as a new support, right? If we ended up breaking above this level, maybe tomorrow or when the futures market open, uh, the, when the futures markets open tonight and we maintain them as a support, this would be a good sign if we maintain this uh, resistance as a support that we're heading back up to 61.20 again, making UWT a very very solid move. And UWT, if we go back to this chart and hop on the five day, five minute, we can see, actually, no, let's go back to the 20 day, one hour. We'll see it better there. We can see UWT is also at a point of resistance right now, where if we were to pop out, that's going to be a huge bullish move to the upside. We can expect more green if that were to happen. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of UWT. 
Four more here on the list, guys. One that I'm actually already in is ticker symbol NVDA, NVIDIA stock. And NVIDIA, guys, has been really a slow mover here over the past couple of days. But I did end up getting in on this day, I believe. We saw the big drop. I think it might have been this day. If it's not this day, it might have been one of the other days. But for the sake of this video, let's just say it was this day, right? I ended up getting in at about 170, uh, what was it, like 175. 176 ish we ended up running up actually no i think it was this day i got in at about 175 176 whatever it is guys but anyway i ended up getting in roughly here with the intentions of selling at about 185 dollars which is that next resistance that we're seeing and we're seeing that nvidia is maintaining the 50 simple moving average we sold off and bounced on that old resistance which is now a new support at about 172 which is a very good sign that we want to level up to the next resistance and honestly guys i'm looking to add more here on monday if we do break 180 dollars so all in all, NVIDIA is looking pretty solid right now. It's maintaining its uptrend. It bounced on the old resistance as a new support. And let's say we break above 185. The next spot I'm going to be looking to see that it potentially touches is going to be $205, which it might seem like a long shot from where we are right now. But there definitely is potential for us to get there on a technical basis. And that is the next technical resistance that we are seeing here on the 180 four hour chart so from where we are now up to 185 it offers about a three percent margin and let's say the best case scenario here 100 percent base best case scenario if we were to go all the way to 205 that would be a 13 nearly a 13 percent margin of profit here on nvidia so nvidia that is i think what is this the seventh one that i'm watching here and we have three more to talk about in this video the third or the eighth one here being jd the chinese company right so you know all uh for all you guys that don't know the chinese companies out there you know alibaba tencent jd most of these have been getting slaughtered over the past couple of months but we have been seeing some pretty solid recovery especially in jd.com right just based off let's just go to the one uh the one year very quickly so we were at 45 dollars we lost more than half of the value in jd we found the bottom here and now we've been recovering very nicely in the stock and keep an eye on this potential bullish cross that we're going to see on JD the moving averages here are about to cross remember the 50 SMA above the 180 SMA is a bullish move and literally they're about to touch here as we can see on the one year one day this uh you know the candlesticks here have already broken out of the resistance of the 180 sma which is a very good sign as well but the thing that i'm really looking for here is to see whether or not we're going to pull back this upcoming week, right? We noticed we did break the resistance at about $29.50 to $30. Now I want to see, are we going to maintain this level as a new support, right? This is very important in my eyes to get into JD.com, right? There's a pretty solid possibility that we do end up maintaining this level and we bounce up and continue the recovery process. But based on the RSI here, we are overbought and there is also a chance that we do pull back and test this 50 simple moving average as a support which has been a support over the past couple of weeks as we can see based on the candlesticks right so let's say you know we pulled back to the 50 sma maybe at about 29 dollars at that point i think that could be a good potential entry back up to 30 dollars which is this resistance right here maybe about 29.50 and for me to add more money let's say if we were to pull back bounce on the 50 sma and slowly start to push up i would want to see a break out of 29.50 before i do add more money into jd.com but as of right now it is looking pretty solid the recovery in it is looking pretty nice and i think roku is in the same spot which is the ninth actually no it's not in the same spot this is kind of in a wedge like the s p 500 was this past week and let me explain right we're making higher lows but we're also making 
lower highs at the same time. So this one can go either two ways, right? Are we going to get rejected here, solidify that third lower high, and push down for a bearish move if we broke the support as well? Or are we going to break out like this? which is going to be a huge bullish sign for Roku. And at that point, we're going to be looking to test the next resistance, which is at about 69, 68.75 to $69. So this is actually one that I got called out in the uh, Instagram on Instagram DM. And this is very interesting right now, guys. Remember the S&P 500, like we were talking about, it was making lower highs and higher lows at the same time, lower highs, higher lows. This is a very similar pattern to what Roku is at right now. So just keep an eye. Are we going to make that bullish pattern, the bullish move, or are we going to get rejected here and sell off and do something like that, which in terms of swing trading, that's not going to be too ideal. I'm not going to be watching Roku if we do end up doing that. So just keep an eye, especially if we break the 50 SMA resistance and again, that level to the upside. Just keep an eye on those levels. So the last one I'm going to talk about here is a highly requested one is ACB Aurora Cannabis. So we all know Aurora Cannabis, Kronos Group, you know, what's the other one? CGC, Afria. These are ones, the uh, marijuana stocks, these are ones that have been absolutely crazy over the past couple of months, right? A lot of these have doubled in price. A lot of them have gone up 50%. The gains have been absolutely amazing. And I've been looking to actually build a position in ACB on this pullback that we've gotten, right? From 1030 I was looking to initially build a position at $9 if we were to maintain this level a couple of trading days ago back in this time, but we can clearly see we broke that level of support, which is what really um, dragged me away from taking a position there, but now it's looking like we're maintaining that level or we're trying to rather maintain that level of support at $9 again, which is a pretty good sign for this upcoming week. So take an eye, uh, you know, this is a support level from back in, what was this, uh, September of 2018. And if we're zooming up a bit here in terms of ACB, what we don't want to see this upcoming week is for us to get rejected by the top of this trend line, which is a resistance clearly over the past couple of weeks. And we don't want to see a rejection by the 50 SMA, right? Ideally for me to take a position here, I would want to see a break out of this level, right? And, and obviously for us to continue to maintain $9 as a support, and then eventually a break out of the 50 SMA resistance, as well as this previous resistance, which is really right by the 50 SMA at about $9.30. If we were to break this first resistance and then the second two resistances here, that means in my eyes, we're going to retest on a technical basis here, the next high, which is at about $10.30. And if we hop in here on the five day, five minute, maybe let's go to the 20 day, one hour. We'll be able to see this on a closer basis, right? The 50 SMA has been acting as a very strong resistance here. We see the bearish cross, but now we lit, we popped a little bit above the 50 SMA on Friday, but we're still under that downwards trending line. So eventually, what I would like to see, again, let me just say it again, a break out of this level of this downwards trend line, a break above 930, which in this case on the 20 day one hour is going to put us above the 180 SMA. And from there, if we do break those levels, that's going to be a pretty bullish move in my eyes on ACB. And from there, that's what I would want to see in order to take a position. So those are a couple of stocks and ETFs, guys, 10 to be exact, that I'm watching here in April. Tomorrow, Monday, we're starting off April 1st in the month of April in 2019. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about these stocks. Do you have any other ones that you're watching? I'm sure you guys do. Drop those down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, 
feel free to hit that like button. Consider subscribing that red button down below. Hit that so you can be updated and notified every time that I do upload a new video. And if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to go check out some of the other ones. I uploaded a video yesterday on Roth IRAs, the easiest and simplest way in my eyes for a young person to become a millionaire over the span of their lives. And there's a bunch of other videos that you can check out as well if you did enjoy this one. And I appreciate everybody out there for sticking to the end, for watching this video. It really does mean a lot to me. Good luck this upcoming month, this upcoming week. If you're in the Discord chat, we'll chat there. I'll see you all in the chat. Peace out.